You can sit down, have a drink at a bar starting tomorrow in Arkansas, but some say it's too much too soon. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Marlisa Goldsmith. THV 11's Melissa Ziguitz is live in the River Market tonight with how some downtown bars are handling the reopening process. Melissa. Yeah, Marlisa, so some bars like Willie D's are waiting a couple days and opening up on Thursday. And tonight we want to hear from you. Will you be going to a bar anytime soon? Go to THV11.com slash vote and let us know. We are going to do what's right for the patrons and our employees, of course. Willie D's is one of the most popular bars in downtown Little Rock. And starting Thursday, you will be able to enjoy a drink and live music again. As we understand, the live music will be fine, um, but there will be guidelines for the performers. Governor Asa Hutchinson says guidelines for bars will be similar to restaurants, like requiring face masks, only allowing a third of capacity in, and enforcing social distancing. So we're not going to encourage congregating. Entertainment director Susan Irwin Prouse says smoking will also no longer be allowed inside Willie D's. We talked about the ventilation system that we have installed when there was smoking to go ahead and keep that on to encourage the ventilation during this time. We want it to go slow. That's the intent. It's not supposed to, you know, be okay. Floodgates are open. Let's go. Don Dugan, owner of Dugan's Pub, is waiting on more instruction from the health department before he makes a decision on reopening his bar. So I want to make sure that we're in compliance with what's going on. Dugan opened his restaurant last week and says things have gone smoothly. People that have come in have been very kind, uh, very patient. They all understand what's going on. Dugan wants to make sure his customers are safe sitting at his bar. We want people to come in and feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable going out yet, then don't. And it doesn't matter whether you come to see us or anybody else. We just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, and we're looking forward to doing that and seeing what this weekend turns out to be. Now again, bars inside restaurants can open tomorrow. Freestanding bars can open May 26. Reporting live from, River, from the River Market, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. Thanks so much, Melissa. The Saracen Casino in Pine Bluff is back open today, despite an attempt to keep it closed. A resolution was brought before the Pine Bluff City Council tonight to delay the casino's reopening, but Mayor Shirley Washington tells us it failed. Saracen is following state guidelines with cleaning and distance monitoring. City employees were also allowed back in offices and community members were allowed back in city buildings today. The Oaklawn Casino is also up and running as of today in Hot Springs. Masks are required for guests and employees. Temperature checks are being done at the door and smoking is no longer allowed. Chairs were also removed from every other gaming machine in order to keep guests at a safe distance from one another. Another sign of reopening today in Arkansas, Riverdale 10 Movie Theater opened its doors once again. Of course, it comes with some new rules, including a mask requirement, a reduced number of show times, six feet of distance between moviegoers, and a ban on refills for the time being, as instructed by the Department of Health. Good Monday evening, Central Arkansas meteorologist Nathan Scott. It's been a beautiful start to the new work week, but we dealt with some nasty weather through the weekend. In case you missed it, the National Weather Service did find evidence that six tornadoes struck the state Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. These are very short-lived and weak tornadoes, but nonetheless, there you see through Hempstead County, Columbia, into Nevada County, Miller, and also Little River. Out there right now, temperatures are cooling down to the upper 50s, low 60s. There are some clouds off to the north, and we'll see those clouds move in going into our Tuesday from the northeast. So expect more clouds, especially from the Little Rock Metro off to the northeast. Temperatures, though, still very comfortable and will be dry. That's going to change, though. Going into the latter part of the work week into Memorial Day weekend, the rain chances will be going up. I'll have more on that coming up. All right, let's take a look at the numbers tonight. This chart right here shows the number of new cases the state has seen each day since our first case back in March. Today we only saw 54 new cases, which is the smallest jump we've seen in a week. Unfortunately, we also learned today two more Arkansans have died from COVID-19, bringing our state's total to 100 deaths. The other numbers a lot of people want to hear about when their pandemic unemployment assistance check is getting here. THV 11's Rolly Hoyt has the latest on the data breach discovered over the weekend and the delay it's now causing. 
The troubled website built by the state of Arkansas from scratch for unemployment assistance is back in the garage and the hood is up. Its security is in question and whether it's because of a hacker or a concerned citizen depends on your political point of view. Now thousands of freelancers and contractors are left waiting for some PUA and they may have to wait for the FBI. My information is that uh, the uh, data was exploited. That's Governor Asa Hutchison's way of describing what happened when someone managed to see secure information on the PUA portal. To a former Homeland Security honcho, that sounds like a hack. This, this matter is being investigated by the FBI. Investigators have their hands full with fraudsters targeting unemployment in other states. Here, since being discovered Friday night, the site has been down. The governor says it happened quickly, but Democrats disagree. They say an applicant discovered the site's poor security, and they want answers from the people who built it. Who administered this contract? Who oversaw this contract? What are the ramifications to those who chose this vendor? What are the ramifications to the vendor? Democrats say the person called two state agencies to alert them and then called the weekly newspaper, the Arkansas Times. That part could be trouble for the would-be whistleblower. A statement from the FBI confirms the investigation and urges anybody who finds a cyber vulnerability to report it and then leave it alone. Meanwhile, Arkansas is falling farther behind other states and doling out the PUA dollars, and the governor is left to deal with a political problem brought on by a technical trip-up. It's uh, technical. We have technical experts that are working on this. The FBI is working on this. And so uh, that's all the data, that's all the information that I can share with you. Roley Hoyt, THV 11 News. President Donald Trump says he's taking a controversial drug to stop him from catching the coronavirus, despite FDA warnings not to. During a roundtable with restaurant executives, the president revealed he's been taking the drug hydroxychloroquine along with zinc for nearly two weeks now. The president says he consulted the White House physician before taking it. No, I asked him, what do you think? He said, well, if you'd like it. I said, yeah, I'd like it. I'd like to take it. A lot of people are taking it. A lot of frontline workers are taking hydroxychloroquine. The FDA says it is still reviewing the safety of the drug and warns it has not been shown to be safe or effective for treating or preventing COVID-19 and says it can cause abnormal heart rhythms. For the first time in months, a live concert with an in-house audience took place in Arkansas tonight. Temple Live in Fort Smith hosted musician Travis McCready on stage tonight. The venue reduced its capacity by 80%. Masks were required and temperatures were checked at the entrance. Temple Live's manager says he hopes tonight is a sign of good things to come. And to be a part of it, it's you know it's a historic day that music and live with, a, with an audience is, is back. Hopefully we can continue this. Tonight's concert was originally scheduled for last week, but with pressure from the state, including revoking the venue's alcohol license, it was moved to tonight. 